So the infraspinatus is one of the four rotator cuff muscles and it's found deep on the posterior aspect of the scapula. So if we remove the deltoid muscle, which is this large superficial shoulder muscle, uh, you can then see the four rotator cuff muscles with infraspinatus here on the posterior scapula. So it originates obviously on the back, as we've said, of the scapula in this flat surface that's underneath this, which is the spine of the scapula. So underneath or infra, and this is infraspine, so infraspinous, and it's in a, a, a depression or fossa, as they're called. So it's in the infraspinous fossa. That's where it originates. And then from its origin, it then runs laterally around the scapula to insert into the bump at the top of the humerus, which is called the greater tubercle, often written to insert at the middle facet. In terms of its action, if you isolate the infraspinatus muscle, it laterally or externally rotates the humerus. But the way to think about this, as with all the rotator cuff muscles, is that it functions together as a uh, functional dynamic unit, providing stability at your shoulder joint whilst you're moving your arm or simply keeping the ball or the head of the humerus in the socket, the glenoid fossa, whilst our arm is moving. So now let's take a little look at the nerve supply. And I've removed the other rotator cuff muscles and I've put on screen a, a dissected version of the brachial plexus and the infraspinatus receives its innovation from this which is the suprascapular nerve so that nerve actually originates on the superior trunk of the brachial plexus which is made up of the anterior rami of cervical nerve roots c5 and c6 so you will sometimes see suprascapular nerve bracket c5 c6 it's just referring to which nerve roots make up that nerve so then the suprascapular nerve runs through this groove at the top of the scapula that's called the suprascapular notch and it, it actually gives off a branch uh, first to the supraspinatus muscle uh, and then it runs around the side of the scapula to innervate the infraspinatus muscle underneath. And so that's just the final view. You can see that nerve comes off at the top uh, from the superior trunk and then down to innervate the infraspinatus. It receives its blood supply from the suprascapular artery, which comes off of the subclavian artery, as you can see here. And now if we move sort of posteriorly again and actually remove the infraspinatus muscle, you can see that suprascapular artery more clearly. But at the base of the scapula, there is also this artery, which is the circumflex scapular artery. And that's the other blood supply to the infraspinatus muscle. Now, the circumflex scapular artery is a branch of the subscapular artery, which actually originates off the axillary artery. So essentially, the circumflex scapular artery and the suprascapular artery meet on the back of your scapula and create an anastomosis together so we're joining together and that's what supplies our blood to the infraspinatus muscle so that's the anatomy of the infraspinatus muscle i hope you found this tutorial useful if you have please give us a like and subscribe and for more make sure you come over to clinicalphysio.com thanks for watching